All right, guys. I don't get super excited for too many things, but this is one of those things that I'm very excited for. My new batteries came in. This is gonna allow me to take my old batteries and use them for the pond. So we're gonna unbox these. Let's get going. Pretty hardy packaging here. Uh, info card, voltages, um, quality control stuff. Wow, two two quality control checks by Alyssa and Alfonso. Thank you, Alyssa and Alfonso. These are nice, lighter than I thought too. Wow, this is a really nice looking box. Got handles on it, it's terminals, built-in breaker. All right, so let me just talk a little bit about why I went with these batteries. So these are in the lithium ion family. Um, they're, they're lithium ion, I-R-O-N, and they're L-I-F-E-P-O, if you remember the periodic uh, table of the elements. So lithium ion covers a broad spectrum of battery chemistries. So you don't want to confuse these with the type of lithium batteries that um, you know catch on fire that you can't bring on airplanes. Um, those those contain cobalt. These do not contain cobalt. Um, of all the lithium ion battery chemistries, lithium iron is definitely the safest. So uh, one of the reasons I specifically went with these batteries is because uh, they have a 10 year warranty and they also have batteries in the field that are exceeding their warranty period. Um, so not a lot of companies have been doing this that long. Simplify has cells, they have everything they need and they're made right in America. So you can actually buy these right now. Um, the way that I use this cabin, I might cycle this thing 50 times a year. That's not a lot of cycles, so I'm never ever going to hit 10,000 cycles. More than likely the time is going to be the issue for me, so the fact that these last longer than 10 years um, is really appealing to me because I, I know that I'm going to have to buy these once, and these are basically lifetime batteries. So I've lived with flooded lead acid batteries for three years. Um, and you know what, they work and they have their place, but I'm pretty excited to be switching over to lithium. Um, one of the things is that you don't have to water them. That's kind of annoying. Uh, you don't have to have these vented. I have an old video where I actually made a voltage activated power venting. I don't have to worry about that or mess with anything like that with these. Um, there's also some other advantages. Um, if you think about your car gas tank, with flooded lead acid batteries, the efficiency that they charge at is not 100%. So if I'm getting a thousand watts of solar power and I wanna put that thousand watts into my battery, I actually have to generate more like 1,150 or 1,250 just to get a thousand watts into the battery. So they don't charge at 100% efficiency. It's like having to buy 12 and a half gallons instead of having to buy 10 gallons of gas. Um, and the other thing is, is as you use power, lead acid batteries are not very efficient. So in addition to having to put more gas into your tank, it burns less efficiently when you go to use it. Lithium is, has very minimal efficiency losses on both ends, charging and discharging. So when we go to install these, um, I have all Victrin components. What's kind of nice is I can go on the website and they have a Victrin integration guide that basically tells me all the settings that I need to adjust when I switch from lead to, to uh, lithium iron. It's very easy conversion. So the other thing that my flooded lead acid batteries don't like is they, they don't want to have a big discharge all at once. They, like if I were to pull, um, say like 50 amps at a, at a time, I would not get the full capacity of the battery. The, the lead acid batteries like, you know, they want like a hundred watt discharge, you know, and just kind of use power very steadily. They don't, they don't want you to use power as we actually need it. Like if you're going to run uh, a circular saw or something or, or a table saw, those high amp draws really fast, um, start and stop, they kind of wreak havoc on the lead acid batteries. 
the, the lithium iron are much more tolerant of that kind of usage. Another thing you don't have to do is an equalization charge. Um, that's when you, you charge the battery for a period of time with a higher voltage. Like normally I'd charge, charge something at, at like 28 and a half, 29 volts for lead. My Crown batteries actually want an equalization charge of over 30 volts, which is, is a problem because it can actually damage some of my 24 volt components in this cabin. This, the highest charging voltage for these ever is 28 volts, um, which is really nice. You don't blow, I've blown out bulbs. I've burnt out little USB chargers um, when I've been doing equalizations, just not really knowing that they couldn't tolerate that. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So these are UL and UN testing. UN testing is what's required to put a battery on a plane. Uh, the UL testing is, is needed for insurance and fire codes. I don't personally have to deal with either one of those here, but you probably do. Um, so there's some of the stuff they do. It's pretty rigorous. They do um, they do hot and cold temperature testing. They do electrical abuse testing, which is basically like over voltage, under voltage, um, drop testing. I'm not going to drop these um, for you, but they've done it on um, test batteries. Um, so low pressure vibration testing and and a lot more. Um, so they are very rigorously tested. Well, so the room I need to work on is the same room I placed all my junk. So. I get that stuff out of there. Enough of this stuff so I don't step on it. Creating more problems by moving stuff to someplace else that's in the way. All right, so I got this all cleared off. Obviously, I got to get my lead acid batteries out of here, water them, do some maintenance on them, um, take this vent system out, and then uh, get the new batteries mounted somehow and wired up. And then we've also got to put a low voltage disconnect on here. Um, so the batteries have a BMS, but you should never, no matter the battery, no matter the lithium ion battery, you should never rely on the BMS to be the cutoff. You should always have two levels of safety in terms of low voltage. So we're going to put a low voltage disconnect on the line that goes to all of my DC loads. So normally you might want to have a inverter that you can program a low voltage disconnect in. Um, for me, I don't really need to do that because I don't use my inverter for anything really except for when I need to plug something in. Um, I've wired this whole cabin for DC. So I don't like, this is not a major component that's gonna lead to a low voltage situation. So um, I don't need to do that, but if you run everything off your inverter, you should definitely have an inverter that can program a low voltage disconnect of, I think it's 25.2 or one, if you wanna go like 90 or 80% discharged. Um, this one is not really compatible with those. I'd have to use a relay and wire in a separate disconnect, which I, we can do later if I need to. So now is the point where we, if we actually disconnect everything, we're going to lose our light and our power. So I need to think about what I do now. <laughs> All right, so we need to wire in this um, low voltage disconnect. So this is Victron Smart Battery Connect. It's pretty simple. Um, you've got two terminals here. Um, you're positive. Uh, from um, the batteries would come here and then out. So this would be like all of your loads. We need to put this right on this wire. Um, this wire travels from the bus bar out to my DC load center. So I've got a DC load center here that powers two sub circuit panels, um, basically like fuse blocks. Uh, so this, if I put it here on this wire, it will capture all of my DC loads. And basically this thing, when if the voltage happens to get too low, 
like I will set this to, to cut out at um, around 20% state of charge remaining. Um, and what that does is just protects the battery and it makes it so you don't have to rely on the BMS to do that job. You always want redundancy and something like that because you're, you can ruin your batteries if, you, if your BMS fails and you drain them all the way. Even lithium ion, you can actually ruin them. So this is good to have in the system. We're going to put this in. Um, and it's just going to go right about there. I need to be able to connect to the negative with this wire so that it, uh, it can, um, so that the antenna will work and so that it can be programmed. And so, so we got to either, when we do this, we're going to lose all of my lights. So it's going to make things kind of hard to film for a little bit. So we'll have to bear with us. All right, so we're going to put this thing in now. I'm just going to pull these screws out so that this, this isn't in my way. All right, so this, um, this thing, I have a choice here. I can either mount it upside down, which will bother me for the rest of my life, or I can mount it right side up, and the in and the out are going to be crossing each other. So I'm going to do it that way. And uh, if you think I should have done it the other way, well, I know you guys will let me know. So we got to kill power here. So we're going to lose a little bit of light. Oh. Thank you.